proportional integral derivative controller is a control loop feedback mechanism widely used in industrial control systems and other applications requiring constant adjustments of an actuator based on a measurement. Now we have some terminology here. First of all, we're going to talk about a process variable. Okay, so process variable is our measurement that we're going to try to control to a set point. And you can see an animation down here just with the process variable with this temperature control lab. Now the other one we have on there is the dashed line. That is going to be the set point. Okay, so the set point is our desired temperature. Now this might be like your thermostat in your home or some kind of temperature in an industrial process where that's a temperature that we want to try to make our environment. And the way we're going to do that is through the use of this, of this output. Okay, so the OP, that is the controller output. That is the thing that is going to be adjusted as an actuator. Now we're going to review the equation for this, for the PID controller, both from the academic side uh, and how we study this, but also in practical terms, how we implement this in practice with positional or velocity form, uh, implementing uh, anti-reset windup and making sure we do not have derivative kick when we have set point changes. So let's just review the equation for the PID controller. Okay, so our output, I'm just going to write this as our controller output, okay, U of T, is going to be a combination of a proportional, okay, so I'm just going to write KP times the air. Now the air here is going to be equal to the set point minus the PV value. So it's just the difference uh, between where I want to be and my current measured value. So this is going to be the proportional term. And some controllers are going to be P only controllers. They're just going to have that term. Now if we have another term, okay, I'm going to write KI here, and then it's going to be the integral of the air. And this is going to be the integral term. Okay, proportional integral and then derivative is going to be the last. So now we're going to take the derivative, KD, and then this one is going to be D air D time. Okay, and there we have derivative. Okay, so this is the PID equation. We have a combination of the proportional integral and derivative pieces of that. Now, if we scroll down here, just on the course website, you'll see a description of each of those. And one of the things that we do in particular, you know, this integral or this derivative term right here, okay, uh, some modifications to this equation so that we don't have some undesirable effects. Uh, we're going to replace this, okay, we're going to replace this one with minus KD, okay, times uh, the derivative of the process variable. And I'll show a derivation for that down below, but we're just going to replace that, um, that so we don't get a derivative kick every time we have a set point change. All right, so um, here is the equation, okay, that I talked about with a proportional integral and derivative, and a lot of times we replace, okay, this one, we'll replace this one with KC, okay, we'll replace this one with KC over tau i, that's our integral time constant, and then we'll replace this one with KC times tau d. Okay, so that's just an alternative form that gives us a controller gain that adjusts all of these simultaneously. Okay, but there's just basically three tuning parameters, whether it's KP, KI, and KD, or KC, tau i, and tau d. All right, so those are the tuning parameters that we can adjust. All right, now, um, if we want to implement this on an actual process where we have a sampling time, we're going to take this equation and we are going to modify it a little bit so that 
we can account for the fact that we don't con measure continuously, but we measure maybe every one second. Okay, so this discrete form is that u, our controller output, is going to be equal to some bias term. Now that's the value of the controller output when we first turn the controller on. So let's say we're driving our car down the highway and we're going 60 miles per hour, our gas pedal is pressed down 40% of the way. Then this would be equal to um, that 40%, okay? 40% initially, it would just stay constant at that value. So right when you turn on the controller, it's whatever the actuator is currently. That's gonna be that value. And then we're going to have plus Kc times our air, okay, plus Kc over tau i, okay, this is just the alternative forms, and then we're just going to have a summation instead of the integral. We're going to go i equals 1 up to k, that's the number of total samples that we've seen, and then we're going to have our air times uh, the delta t, so that might be 1 second, and then we're going to have minus Kc tau d, and then instead of the derivative of the PV, we're just going to do a finite difference. So we're going to take the PV at our current time minus the PV, okay, at k, oh, I can't get over here, let me move over just a little bit, okay, and this is going to be k minus 1 divided by delta t. So there's our derivative. A lot of times we have to do something different than that just because we have noise in our data, random fluctuations that makes the instantaneous derivative not very reliable. So we have to do, put in some filters. But a lot of times what we do is we just leave that derivative term out altogether and then we only have a proportional integral controller. Okay, so PI controller. All right, now we also have the velocity form as well. I just wanted to show you where we get this equation, okay? Because this one's commonly used in industrial practice, like on programmable logic controllers or in a distributed control system. You'll often see the velocity form more commonly um, in uh, industrial control systems. So um, first of all, this is the equation, but where where did it come from? Okay, so let's go ahead and just write our continuous one first of all. Okay, our u of t equals u bias. Okay, u bias plus k. I'm just going to put kp times our air. Okay and then I'm going to have plus ki times the integral of the air and then plus kd times the derivative of the air or if I just replace that that one is going to be minus the derivative of not the air but of dpv dt Okay, now um, one of the things that, in addition to derivative kick, when we have a set point change, if we ever change these tuning parameters right here, it's also going to cause a, a sudden shift in the, um, in the output. So what we often do is take a velocity form, which basically means we just take the derivative of this. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative of this uh, function, okay? And then that is going to be uh, kp times the derivative of the air. And let me go down one size on this font, plus uh, ki times the air, okay? Minus kd times the second derivative of the PV value. Okay, so I've just taken the derivative of that equation. Now, if I just do a finite difference 
of that. Okay, so I'm just going to take a finite difference where now I'm going to have uk minus uk minus 1 divided by delta t equals, and then this is going to be kp times the error at sample k, so that's going to be the current time minus the error at the prior time, okay, divided by uh, delta t. And then I'm also going to have ki times the error at the current k value. Okay, now the second derivative term, um, I'm going to use a finite difference approximation for that. Okay, and that's going to be uh, the PV at the current value minus 2 times the PV k minus 1 plus the PV at k minus 2. Let me move over just a little bit here. Okay, so k minus 2 divided by delta t squared. So if I just multiply through by delta t and then move this uk plus 1 over, I'm going to get the final version of this. So that's going to be uk equals, and then it's uk minus 1 plus kp. And so sometimes people write the delta r like that, and then plus ki times the air, okay, minus kd, and then you have the PV values here. And those are just going to, that squared is going to cancel out, so you're just going to have delta T in the denominator. Okay, so PV, K minus 2, and then I'm going to have delta T in the denominator. So that's the velocity form. So this is going to be equivalent to the regular PID form, but uh, if you have a change in any of these parameters, uh, then you're going to have a bump in the controller output from the positional form instead of the velocity form. So this is often used on PLCs or on DCS or other control systems. Okay, so let's keep going down. We have, you know, how do you come up with values of those? Uh, there are many different uh, tuning correlations that you can use. You have uh, ITAE, the integral time average error. You have the IMC, internal model control. Uh, uh, so you have many different tuning correlations that people have come up with over time. And some of these, uh, what you do is you create a step test in your output, okay, and you observe um, the rise in your process variable, and, and then you come up with values such as kp, and that's going to be your process gain, okay, and then tau i, uh, sorry, this is going to be uh, tau p, that's your process time constant. Okay, and then your uh, theta p, and that's your process time delay. Process time delay. And there's other, there are other lecture notes about how to obtain those here in the course. If you're interested, there's the first order plus dead time graphical fit or optimization fit. So go back to those if you have questions about how to implement those. Okay, and then you're going to come up with, um, using these correlations, we're going to come up with Kc, tau i, and tau d, or Kp, tau i, or sorry, uh, Ki and Kd. Okay, so you can just multiply those out to come up with the other ones, and then implement those and test them. All right, and then we also have an optional derivative filter, okay? So this uh, derivative of the PV right here, we can use that to help filter out some of the noise. Okay, and then if you just want to go back to simple tuning rules, these often work if you have negligible dead time. Just use a 
controller gain that's the inverse of the process time constant and then the integral time constant that's equal to the process time constant as well. Okay, we've already talked a little bit about anti-reset windup. Basically just means the integral term stops changing when you are at a saturation. So you're at an upper or lower limit for the actuator. All right, and then uh, this is a little bit about derivative kick as well, why we use negative uh, PV dt instead of um, instead of uh, d a or d time. All right, so let's go to this interactive widget right here. This is going to be in Colab. It lets you run it uh, through a web browser, or you can run it and download it from GitHub or from this link as well. But I'm just going to run it here from Colab, and let's just go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger, and then runtime will run all. It says, uh, warning, it's not authored by Google. Go ahead and run it anyway and it'll run this widget and give you a, a kind of an intuitive understanding about how controller tuning works all right so i'm going to come down here and just adjust these slider bars now you can see the set point of the controller as well as the process variable now you can see the error that we talked about the set point minus the pv value all right and then you can also see the proportional, which is the green, the integral, and the derivative values. And then there's our final controller output. So all three of those are combining into this controller output. So if we increase the gain, then you can see the proportional term gets bigger. So does the integral and the derivative. So you have KC in each of those. It increases those together. And there you can see the error, okay? And the error gets back down to zero as it approaches the new set point. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start increasing this even further. Let's see how fast we can get it. We see a little bit of overshoot start happening there. Let's go ahead and decrease the time constant, the integral time constant as well. Now this is in the denominator, so as you decrease it, that integral term gets bigger. Okay, and you can see this integral term starts getting bigger. The proportional term actually goes negative after you start having the overshoot. Okay, but we still have no derivative term here. So let's go ahead and increase this. And this is, uh, you can see as it starts approaching the, the new set point. We see that this, this slope is, is very uh, high. So what it does is it says, um, Oh, I'm approaching too fast. Let me back off from that. Okay, so if I increase the derivative term, you can see it can cause some instability. I mean, just some noise. It can give you some noise uh, that accentuates in your controller output. Okay, but what you probably want to do is use the controller gain as kind of your main handle for this. And then this one can help limit the overshoot that you see. And then this one can have its optional term. Oftentimes we don't even use a derivative term, but you might be able to get a little bit faster response uh, by using the derivative term and limit some of the overshoot. Okay, so there is just an overview of PID control with uh, some source code, some sample source code here on how to implement a PID controller in Python. And uh, it'll generate um, this figure as well. Okay, so for today's lecture, we also have a quiz. So, um, you know, go through this right here and, and answer the questions. And then there's a learning exercise, concentration PID control. And then here is implementing PID control on the temperature control lab. So it'll walk you through it. And there's also solution videos there as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this overview on uh, PID control. And uh, the just go to apminer.com slash PDC for additional course information.